So the first few steps in the tutorial just talk about how to actually copy that to a USB drive. The USB drive that you have is got to be uh, two, two gigs or, or larger, which is not very big at all. It's a pretty straightforward process. I've got uh, steps on there for Mac and for Windows. Um, so I already went ahead and did that on this USB drive here. I put Ubuntu Linux. What I did was I started off, I started off by turning the computer off completely. If you want to be you know, really um, uh, paranoid about it, you can even like unplug it, take the battery out, just make sure there's nothing on there, right? And then you put in your USB drive and you, you uh, let the computer boot into Ubuntu. Um, the other thing that you need to do first is you need to unplug any network cables, make sure it's just not connected to the internet at all. And during this whole first step where we're creating the cold storage uh, address, we're not going to connect to the internet at all because that's the whole point of it. So uh, no connecting to the internet until the computer is off again. So once we boot into Ubuntu, um, what it's going to give us this decision that we can make. Do we want to try Ubuntu or install it? Install just means put it on my hard drive, treat it like a normal operating system. If we're going to try it, it's just going to keep it on the USB drive, and that's, that's what we want to do. So we're going to go ahead and select uh, Try. On this other um, USB drive, and this for, for, creating, uh, for creating a cold storage address, you're probably going to need uh, two USB drives. So this is a two gig uh, drive that has Linux on it. This one has some other files on here that are also, this is also covered in the, the tutorial. This is just a one gig drive. It can be however big, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to put some small files on here. And what I have on here are um, uh, two pieces of software. One is called TrueCrypt for Linux. And TrueCrypt is encryption software. It's an open source free software. And what it will allow you to do is create a file, which we're going to store on this USB drive, that's encrypted with a password. And on there, we can actually put our Bitcoin files. And so provided that we use a good password that no one's going to be able to guess, it's fairly complicated, it's not going to get brute force cracked or whatever. If the password is good, then that means that we could give the file, a copy of that file, to anyone in the world, and they still can't get access to our Bitcoins, which is great, because that means that we can back it up in a lot of places and make sure that it's really, really safe so that house fire, or computer breaks, or whatever, it's not necessarily a problem. So this is the Ubuntu desktop, and it's going to look pretty, I don't know how many of you, I mean, how many people have used Linux before? So a few people. So it's pretty similar to, to Mac or Windows. Um, this is kind of like the start bar here in Windows, or the dock in, 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 uh, uh, in Mac OS X. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to plug in this USB drive that has TrueCrypt. And I'm going to install it. And you're going to have to do this each time that you boot, to, you boot into Ubuntu because there's nothing pre-installed on here. This is a special program that we're adding to it. Is your base OS Ubuntu, or is this a partition? My base OS that I have installed on the hard drive is Windows. Windows okay. This is just only happening on the USB drive. It's not touching the hard drive. Uh, so so both USBs are connected right now. Yes, both of them are connected. And you're not going to disconnect the Linux one at all because if you unplugged it, then it would, just, it would freeze. That's why it has operating system on there. So early in the tutorial, we copied two important files. Just ignore this one for the moment. We copied uh, this TrueCrypt file and this Bitcoin file. Uh, this is Bitcoin Qt for Linux as well. Again, that's a free and open source piece of software. And so I'm just going to go ahead and select both of them. And I'm going to right click them and copy them. Now if I go to my home directory in here, this is kind of like a little file browsing window. It looks pretty similar to you know, Mac or Windows. I'm going to go ahead and paste it, paste it there. And the home directory is kind of like, a, I think there's a home directory in, in Mac, and Windows is kind of like your users folder, or your my documents, or whatever you want to call it. So I put, pasted the two folders and uh, files in there. And they're both uh, tar.gz files, which is kind of like a zip file. And so 
first we want to do uh, true grip. So I'm going to click on that, right click it, and uh, select extract here, which is going to unzip or, or unarchive the file, if you will. And that will create this little file right here, which is the TrueCrypt installer. I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to go to run. And this is uh, the installer. So just kind of going quickly through it. Yes, I want to install TrueCrypt. Uh, blah, blah, blah. OK. It's going to pop up this window and do a little bit of stuff to install it. And then it will say press enter when you're done. Press enter. So that's it. TrueCrypt is installed. Now to actually get TrueCrypt running, we have to run it from the command line. So how many people have run stuff in the command line before? Everyone. Okay, good. It used to be that, not you? It used to be that practically no one did. Like it was a scary black box kind of thing. <laughs> But more and more these days, people are getting, they're forced to get comfortable with that. So um, what we're going to do is this little circle occult looking symbol right here um, is like a little search thing. So if we search for terminal, that's what the um, command line is called in Linux. Oops, sorry. And we're going to open that up. Okay. Do you have any questions so far? So all we did was we moved it into Ubuntu, we installed TrueCrypt, and now we're going to open it. So to open up TrueCrypt, it's uh, user in TrueCrypt, and a little little thing to uh, little tip for people in um, Linux and Mac and so forth. If you can kind of you can ask it to complete stuff for you in the command line by just pressing tab. So this is TrueCrypt. So what it does is um, you can select uh, files. You'll it will ask you for your password or your, your whatever, and it will decrypt a file and then it will mount it as a volume on your system. We don't have any. Um, we don't have any to mount yet, so we're going to start off by creating a new one. And this is where we're gonna. This is gonna be the encrypted volume or encrypted uh, file container where we're gonna put all of our Bitcoin files. So if you go to create volume, create a new encrypted file container, just a standard TrueCrypt volume, and we need to select a location for it. Let me just see if I can. This is the weak point in the whole process is the password, right? So <clears throat> if you're going to put a bunch of money into this file and you're protecting a bunch of money with a password, you want to make sure that's a damn good password, right? You want to make sure it's a, if you have a million dollars in there, it's a million dollar password. So um, in the tutorial online, I give a link to one or two uh, websites that give some tips on how to create a good password and so forth. Um, but you know, from the most importantly, Never use a password that you're using for some other service online or whatever. And you don't even want to make it similar. Like if you're 
uh, password to get on Facebook is Kitty Cat 32. Kitty, Kitty Cat 33 is not an appropriate password for protecting your money, right? So um, I'm just going to type in you know, whatever here. And, uh, Just leave this the same for the format options. And this next screen, what it's doing is it's trying to find some entropy. Entropy is randomness. And you need randomness to encrypt things, because otherwise um, things would always get encrypted exactly the same, right? So um, we're just what it asks you to do is it just asks you to, it asks you to uh, move the mouse around the screen and uh, randomly, you know, as best as you can possible. So do that for a minute or two. And when you're done with that, you press format, and it will actually create the file. And then that's that. We're done creating the file. So now we want to actually decrypt the file so that we can put stuff on there and copy our Bitcoin files to it. So I'm going to click on, uh, first I'm going to select a, a, a slot here. It gives you the number of slots. So just pick the first slot. Um, 